Sister all right, Mary, so, speaking to everyone the same. All right. Um, so what is the name of the organization? Well, we are a collective of organizations. We have Brown Braves working with us. We have Mac Mini Movement. We have El Movement for PJ. And that's just to name a few. Uh-huh. And today we were uh, given our um, a fundraiser for the menu with the menudo, right? Yes. And it was for a fundraiser for what? For a tributary run we are having here in Colorado, July 9th through the 12th. Uh -huh. We are running from Pueblo to Walsenburg, then Walsenburg to the Guajajoyas. But we do a purification ceremony on the 9th, which is the night before the sunrise on the 10th. We will begin here at the mural, the Peace and Dignity Journeys mural, uh, before we head out of town on foot to Walsenburg. Sister, would you like to even express uh, too about the Eagle and Condor prophecy and, and what brings yes. us together on the run? Yes. Just let the sister speak. The Can we get Eagle closer? and Condor is a prophecy that when the continent split, the Eagle and Condor cried. And it was foretold in pyramids down south that in 1992, the Eagle and Condor would fly together again. And that was the very first year of the Peace and Dignity Journeys. It connects the North and South uh, um, Hemisphere <laughs> uh, continent, North and Southern continent. Um, the Northern Eagle staff runners start in Alaska, and the Condor runners start at the tip of Argentina. And it's a seven month run to Central America. And the prophecy, the prophecy tells that the two sides, again, the southern and the northern, are going to join together, as together one. again as one family. Yes. Again. Yes. Since, and when was the um, separation? Well, when the, when the continent split, that was when our people split in four directions. But the peace and dignity journeys is bringing our people back together as one. All people of some indigenous uh, heritage or lineage? Well, Turtle Island is the where the continents broke off from. Uh -huh. So it is a intertribal, which means everyone is part of this run. But us North and Southern, uh, North and South America, indigenous people, we mm -hmm. consider are the heartland. Mm -hmm. We're the uh, stewards, mm -hmm. and so we are the ones to reunite ourselves and then bring the world together in unity. Oh, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yes, I see this happening. Yes. Right, I see it happening. You know, a lot of um, a lot of uh, you know people of uh, indigenous indigenous lineage are connecting with the, over here are connecting with uh, you know brothers in the south. Yeah, we you have know? for a lot of times through, uh, for a long time through our ceremonies, but with um, the government's taking our right to pray, it kind of made it harder for us to stay connected as indigenous people. But this Spirit Runs is helping us remember how that connection remained because we didn't have vehicles, we didn't have airplanes, all that fun stuff. We were runners. We, we had people, runners that would send messages. We would have runners that would trade. Um, even right here, Pueblo, Colorado, it's considered a heart city for a reason. Yeah. Way before it was two highways, uh -huh. it was a, tr a trading post. Right. For all the way up the, the Rocky Mountains and east to west were, were considered a heart city even before. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So yeah. It, this is... Uh, the heart of Turtle Island, we call it, here in Pueblo, Colorado. Uh-huh. Is that right? Yeah, That's because beautiful. of the two rivers. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, uh... Yeah, so the prophecy is that, um... The uh, stewards or the indigenous people are going to come together again and then show the rest of the people how, you know, we can all get together and yes, live in, you know, know, unite and live in harmony. And But there has to be the stewards that guide the people the way, right? Yes, correct. Yeah, I see that, you know, and it's in the spirit. It's in, the, you know, it's in the, it's in all the, you know, on the, the tierra, like everybody here um, is feeling this reuniting of our people coming back together again and that's where our power lies yes. but um, let me ask you one thing uh, that struck me um, 
when you mentioned that the government's taken away our right to pray? That was done a long time ago, back in the 80s, is when we started to receive that, um, that blessing again. Even as Chicano people, it took us a while longer because we weren't full blood, we weren't from a reservation. So a lot of our native people are dispersed everywhere. Right. We don't have identities because we don't have a reservation that we can cling to. So yeah. um, we remind, you know, us even without a reservation that we're, we're just the same. We have the same prayers, we have the same goals. Uh, some of us are urban Indians, they call us, eh, where we learn how to live the second world. But with our teachings, we teach to live both worlds. We, we have to learn have this to. modern world. We right. have to learn that traditional way. So uh -huh. we, uh, that's what we're all still working on. Yeah. Just keeping up with modern day society too is not easy. Right. Let me go help my mom. <laughs> so uh, yeah I, you know i can um sit here and forever but ask you but i wanted to just uh expound a little bit upon what you were talking about and us chicanos that we do we have both sides of you know both sides of that spectrum you know the the modern which you know and we're you know a lot of us are mixed with uh hispanics or whatever you would call it so and we weren't raised with these traditions right mm -hmm. so we're a bit of um like huerfanos like you know outcast or we don't know the, the the way of um the our indigenous ancestors or our familia like you know they had to adapt to this world in order to survive you know mm -hmm. even stop speaking the native language even stop uh, uh practicing the traditional um uh ceremonies and all that just so we could kind of blend in and you know provide some food on the um some food on the table for the family somehow some way right but a lot of times what i notice is that us being uh, who were raised to be called teach ourselves to call chicanos mm -hmm. you know then we try to re you know re step back go to our um indigenous uh, familia but we don't know how you know yes. like we don't know the traditions we don't know the the language we don't know so we still feel and even some of the uh, brothers be like oh he's a hispanic or something like that and don't really see um you know even what you call so-called mexicans are machica mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? And yeah. Chicanos are Mexica. So what would be your advice for somebody to um, that is trying to re-tribalize? With, hold on, with, let me add this. With our decolonize, right? Mm -hmm. With these Hispanic traditions, with these uh, Hispanic uh, religions and these faiths that had got us by so long. Mm -hmm. So what would be your advice to people trying to Re um, tribalize. Re yes, the yeah, there road. you go. Thank you. Okay, so as Chicanos, we call the native way the red road. So when we, the red road to us is the native way. Right. Whether an indigenous way, because we're all natives of the earth, doesn't matter what color you are. But as indigenous people here on Turtle Island, we connect with all of our beings, all of our Chicanos, all of our, I mean, uh, first step, I guess, for a lot of us is the Chicano movement. Right. The Chicano movement was my gateway to get closer to my indigenous roots. Right. And the Crown Prince, can you come over here, brother? Come on over here. And the more we educate each other about what even decolonization is. Okay. A lot of people can spit it out all day, but right. unless you really are it and live it and know it, it's it's really it's it's a hard it's a hard thing. Because when we first come onto the red road, it's kind of narrow because right. we're just learning. Uh -huh. But the longer you are and stay on the red road, it becomes very, very wide. Okay. We have Peyote Way, we have right. Anipi Way, we have Sundance Way. Uh -huh. There's a lot of different realms to this red road. So um, one gateway is education, just with anything. Is okay. to connect with those like minds. We have a couple of groups here in town. There's El Movimiento Sigue. That's a good one. Um, we work on community. We work on indigenous roots. But it really is one of the first lessons coming into the Red Road uh -huh. is making relations. Okay. You have to meet people. You have to talk to people. You have to get to know people, eat with people, sleep with people, cry, sweat. You know, we don't just uh, pray once a day, once a week on Sunday. 
we sweat and we work with each other for weeks at a time. I say a step back from tradition is a step forward. That's where we're going with this. Yes. A step back from tradition is a step forward. Yeah, a step back to tradition is a step to forward. To tradition. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Take it as it is. And that's what it means. This. It's called the Oyate Wanji. It means one nation. Everybody's yes. connected as one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to ask a difficult question now. A lot of us have been ingrained with this um, Catholicism through colonialism, mm -hmm. right? No, sis, you come on over here for you don't I'm mind. Not, you're gonna have us all over here. Yeah, yeah let's, let's all, all, let's all, all yeah, yeah, all yeah, we're, yeah we're let's all, all let's all talk about this real quick because this is important. As far as very important, she can explain to you what's happening right now in her land with the Catholicism and the Kanza. Kanza is the, the traditional ways. So she's trying really hard to bring back that to our own indigenous people, our own families, her own mother, even my own mother. Yeah. <laughs> Miss Catholic over there. Well, but, I, yeah. I thought this <laughs> when Standing Rock happened. Right. So I guess you have to resist to exist. And that woke me up when people were resisting who they are and fighting for water. And I love water. And right now, the Roman Catholic and the, all the Catholicism brainwashed us that made us forget who we are. And that's all genocide. Yeah. It is. It. It and is. 215 children had to wake us up, the unmarked graves. Like, whose children are those? I know those are not the children's. They are, they are the, from the stolen children, but who made them with them? Government won't say that. And but like what we're doing right now is actually scary because we probably have a, someone just put in a, you know those people that investigate and makes you on the put line. on a list. They got me yeah, on Yeah, because you're resistant to exist. Mm -hmm. and they don't want that. And America's is a stolen land. It's all America's is a name that was given to the Americas, meaning savages. So when you're saying America, it's actually savage so when you say native america you're actually saying you're born savage okay so here's the here's the tough question um should all people of indigenous heritage drop the bible yes no yes. so how was that possible <laughs> yeah, well, it's the growth it's the growth the, the, the bible will lead you to the red road he says, come out of her, my people. He's talking about the Catholicism and, 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 and the invasion that the white horse riders took. Cain killed Abel. All this stuff is taking place in the Bible. And when you get done with the Bible, and he says, come out of her, my people, don't bring prayer. Don't sound that final trump. Don't leave the message there no more. It was hidden. The Bible is hidden from the wise and the prudent and revealed and the suckling babes. And our nation has become that suckling babe. We're the nation that the blood is crying up. When Cain killed Abel, that's what they did when they came to Turtle Island and exactly. destroyed this in 500 years. That's that's wisdom. That's well, wisdom. That's what, that's what Creator gives you. Cause that's he, wisdom. That you see the picture of all of it. And that's what the Christian Bible shows you. It shows you their history, their invasion, their Catholic, their ancient religions, their, their ways that they did. But that was because Cain and Abel came from the serpent seed and that came from the sky people that Adam was formed from the earth later because the first creation was creator said it was very very good and then generations passed by and he formed a man from the earth and he took the rib from there and the sky people did that so there's an invasion of the indigenous ways the people who had eternal life and didn't need saviors and catholicisms and and all these other demigods that that this nation their white horse rider their deception and then the killing horse where they slaughtered and then just like they're what they did in christianity they done to this nation exactly so the bible has a lot to yeah. do with with what we're doing he says don't sound that final trump but when you hear them brothers pierce and that whistle is blowing, you know it's something that can't be penetrated. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
Yeah. I would encourage all indigenous people to truly come together and go back to their ancestral ways to protect the earth too. I mean, that's what time it is, I think. And, you know, it's a slow awakening. All right, let's talk about the ancestral ways. A lot of times I go to the Matachin dances and, you know, the ceremonies. And, you know, we blow the horn uh, to the, the east, the, you know, the, the south, the west and all that, right? Mm -hmm. And then we, we put up these prayers. And who, what is the name we're praying to? It is... <laughs> well, you have to have love and to know what it is. It's and to know what the spirit is. It, that's what it is. It's the spirit. It's what you want, what you're praying for, what you see it as. It's, it's not anything that, oh, it is. Here's God, oh my goodness. Everything is God. It's life. It's life. It's life. Go ahead, sister. To all my relations. It's all what were you going to say? How do you see it? So there's a big, huge evolution of Chicano people through the Chicano movement. Some of our practices had to be hidden mm. so we can protect them. Mm -hmm. That's how Matachinas came about. Penitentes, they had to hide their indigenous roots. They had to hide our indigenous beliefs and fake Catholicism, okay? So a lot of these matachinas, a lot of these penitentes, the concheros, we had to hide our true beliefs, our indigenous beliefs with the smoke and the prayers and put, put, our, put our church face on and go to mass so our families were not murdered. So those beliefs have evolved and they're still alive and well. So to drop Catholicism or all those beliefs no no because that's what Chicano people are we weren't born a hundred percent anything we are an evolution of all these things penitentes they're the same way they're an evolution of the traditional beliefs this new belief that's the three faces as a Chicano we carry yeah. all right so uh -huh. even though we have ceremonias down south they were talking about um at Saint San Miguel. Okay, San Miguel is was the archangel, right? So when we talk about the work of Quatemoc, we are still associating wow. the powers right. of indigenous people. Yeah. Uh -huh. So when you talk with them who because I'm not Conchero, but we have relations that are, they see it in that way. They correlate these saints to our own. Uh -huh people our own like uh nimta we have a uh, saint what uh patron saint of of uh of uh mental health the cross is nothing new here we have always had the fourth so direction. we have others yeah. that we yeah. also correlate mayuel with the medicines donancin with mother earth they call her mother mary okay so it's very damn similar <laughs> Yeah, it is. Well, even so we even can't the... tell you no, that's wrong because we pray the similar things. We still have one God. We still have disciples. We right. still have. It's the way that it was interpreted on that part of the world how they exactly thought about that yeah right how we thought about things over here and how they thought about things on that side of the world. It all happened to everyone. Right. People, yeah. It's just how we interpreted that creation. They might have called it uh, ISIS. ISIS. <laughs> the name all, changes, but the spirit's the same, right? Connected. Yeah. Or it's, or, it's good to come to the great here, divide, and share our creation stories, not to force them and say, hey, you have to do this, you need, this is the only way. That is not the only way. There is many ways to be created, many ways to be there, many ways to Tonkashla, to Usain, there's so many different ways, just because you say it in English, there's 500 different ways to say it. So there's 500 different ways of creation stories, thousands of creation stories, and they could even come within, you know, that's why we have dreams and prophecies they keep happening new things will happen new things will come you know they've always happened back then they're going to still continue continue and after, forever you know, forever forever yeah you know that's why we have our ancestors pray to them a lot because they guide us they're, they're with us they're always with us and soon we'll be one of those ancestors too if we believe not a box when we get out of that box of mind thinking we start thinking circles, deep and round and deepness. Then we come back and we know that creation is going. It doesn't stop here. Don't right stop. There, right here. Oops. Cycle. You know, so being open to all creation stories. You know, the dead, the Christians over there hearing their stories. 
but not forcing them and I think that was the problem we had before is this is the only way but now we know that there is many ways to connect with the creator the same one the same one one creator I don't right. think Christianity or Catholicism should exist of what they have done to us and use God's and Jesus' name to destroy the whole people, especially a whole country, especially in spirit and like who we are. They made us take off all our regalia and turn us into them. Like I was born a Roman Catholic, Catholicism yeah, me too. unknowingly. Yeah. Unknowingly. Yeah. And I didn't realize I was brainwashed until probably Standing Rock happened. And uh, 250 children found in British Columbia. Right. That made me realize that I was brainwashed. So we're all brainwashed. That's why we were put on reservations. And it took me a long time to find this road because nobody was there to help me learn about my Inkaze. Like the Denes, they believe in Inkaze. That's us, that's who we are. Ink Onze means um, it's fire, but it's your fire. So you could be a lawyer and that's your Ink Onze. You could be a doctor, that's your Ink Onze. That's what you feed, they say. If you feed bad for your Ink Onze, you'll have bad medicines. And then if you feed good, mm -hmm. you have good. And that's what Roman Catholicism did. Is they fed mm -hmm. the bad. And there's nothing good that ever came out of them from what I saw. Because mm -hmm. when I was Catholic, I gossip about a lot of people. I said a lot of things about a lot of people and hope bad to happen when because Catholic, when you're praying the I, rosary, yeah, they talk Jesus about how they killed, <laughs> murdered Jesus Christ. Jesus <laughs> and that's, that's not right. That's wrong. When you pray, my grandma taught me one prayer. Uh -huh. And that says, it goes like, she told me never ever to forget this prayer because it's what our ancestors prayed a long, long time ago before the colonization happened and never forget that. She told me in Dene, but I'll explain in English. She said, our creator, thank you for giving me this, this world and thank you for creating me and everything that I do on this earth. I, it's for myself and my soul so I can meet you one day and never let me go hungry and wherever I step may nothing happen to me That's beautiful. So is there anybody else that uh, wanted to add something? I don't know a little bit of wisdom. I don't know some of your flavor on it um, One thing I uh, am actually important is because oh, our sacred medicines are being Changed. They're being attacked through another form of capitalism, colonialism. So things like peyote and our state has decriminalized mescaline. And so that puts our sacred medicines at risk. Also other medicines like mushrooms from Mexico. You know, and so what are the spirits of those medicines and how are they being affected by all the changes that are happening with the psychedelic movement that is happening currently? in our state and several other states. So another part of decolonization is decolonizing our ways of thinking that we have access or that we should, we have the ability to serve medicine that indigenous communities have used for thousands and thousands of years. Yeah, that's a good point. That is a good topic. They are, they are uh, mainstreaming it, aren't they? And changing it, right? They want you to be able to go into a clinical location, use sacred medicines, and they don't know the spirit. They don't know the traditions. They haven't been raised. They don't respect it. Properly sit with these medicines, and then people will be harmed. Right. Or they're also not consulting with indigenous communities and asking them, you know, what, how should we approach this? They're just bypassing them and making laws that can affect not only the indigenous communities, but the medicines are sacred medicines. Do you know, do you uh, distribute the ceremony? Are, are you part of those type of ceremonies or I, do you know about them? Or? I do. I, so I work with a clinic in Boulder that's called the Psychedelic Therapy Clinic. And they are using uh, earth medicines in a clinical way. Um, 
which the first problem is it's completely inaccessible because it costs thousands and thousands of dollars to be able to come and sit with medicine and it's not in a traditional way and it's with you know mostly white people keep it traditional <laughs> are, are, right are offering these services so indigenous communities are saying hey if you want to serve medicine come to us for that you can do you know things that they do about prep or integration afterwards but if you're going to actually do medicine work come to the indigenous communities and do that reciprocity show them the appreciation for so try to connect with the, one of your local tribes then huh yeah and ask permission yeah yeah and ask permission and now they've decolon or they've uh, decriminalized a lot of medicines that are traditional medicines yeah asking permission or even coming up with a plan to they're gonna do it all wrong and it's dangerous yeah, that way that's a good point and then it'll be indigenous people have to kill him and clean it all up that's a good point yeah all right so i guess that's it uh, do y'all wanted to say anything um i think they covered a lot yeah okay all right thank you i appreciate it